Hey, everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome to another exciting episode of Allison Rosen is Your New Best Friend. I am very excited to welcome to the show a return guest, someone I last spoke. Well, I actually last spoke with him on his podcast very recently, but I last spoke with him on my show. I think it was back in 2018 and then before that, 2013. So we are overdue for an appearance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there actually was an appearance on the Thursday show, but in terms of like the one-on-one where we really get down to the nitty gritty, we're overdue. Please put your hands together for comedian, actor, writer, podcaster, Kurt Brownoler. He is co-host of the wildly popular bananas podcast and also he has a special right now that was just written up in the new york times and they profiled four comedians all of whom or was it three no it was four all of whom i think are friends all of whom have specials that sort of deal with parenthood and i feel like they were like hey comedians i'm gonna kick three of you in the nuts and i'm gonna elevate one (laughs) And I need to find out how Kurt Brownoller feels about the fact that he's the one who got elevated while they said, hey, fuck you to the rest of them. I'm exaggerating. (laughs) Please welcome to the show, Kurt Brownoller. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's nice to see you. Um, Real fast, I also want to say hello to my producer, Tony Thaxton. Now, for about... (laughs) Six to six months to 12 months, I have spent the first 10 minutes of the show insulting him, and I've recently made a hard right or left <laughs> turn. I can't remember if you if it's if you if you decide to go a different direction, is it a right turn or a left turn? Do you know? I think it's both. I've just made a I've made a hard directional turn, and I've decided because <laughs> I got tired of it. I got tired of it. Six to 12 months after the listeners did, they were done with it after one episode. <laughs> but I'm like, no, I'm st- no, it's it's this is my vision for the show. My vision for the show is alienating everyone. Not even really Tony. I think I like to think he enjoyed it. No, my vision for the show is alienating my listeners for another Again, six months to 12 months. I can't remember. But no, I then I was just like, I'm done with this. So I think Tony might be like, what's happening? Tony, I'm done with that bit. I finally okay. reached the end of yeah, it. Welcome. I was going to say, yeah, you've gone from from <laughs> being mean to me to just not talking to me at the top of the show. Well, I don't so. know. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's because I'm afraid that it's like, it's sort of like an addiction and I can't even go in to the neighborhood where I used to buy drugs because mm. I'm afraid that if I even talk to you, I will go. It'll all like, <laughs> I just haven't, I don't know what to do with my hands right now. Yeah. So I'm just, is, well, I'm, you know, if I talk to you, I don't know what's going to happen. But isn't, Hi. isn't it the way you show love? Isn't it the way you show love, Allison? Yeah, but I don't want to do Yes, but I'm trying to like develop. I'm trying to I'm like a plant. I'm like growing new love tendrils. And they're so if you want to see my love tendrils, that's so gross sounding. If you want to see my tiny love shoots, go to youtube.com slash Allison Rosen. I did put on eyeliner. I feel my eyeliner wings are too long. If you want to see my long eyeliner wings and my tiny love shoot tendrils, youtube.com slash Allison Rosen. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> and look at Tony's confused face and Kurt's confused face and my face with my eyeliner. Um, it is. I felt that it was love, but it just got a little hacky and samey. Anyway, hi, Tony. Welcome. Um, hi, thank you. And hello, Kurt. Anyway, yes, uh, New York Times gave you so much love. Congratulations. Thank you. It's um I have been trying to get anything I've ever done reviewed by the New York Times for 17 years and they finally do it and in the same article they shit on my friends. And so it's like I do want to like get it framed but it's like <laughs> I'm it's in a way I'm framing like a shitting on of my friends. It's really funny. <laughs> okay, so uh, you did have the reaction that I wondered if you'd had. Well, yeah, because I saw the like the title is like something like the 
the pitfalls of parent material or whatever. And so I was like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've been waiting to be mentioned in the New York Times for 17 years and they're just going to shit all over my special. And I was no, they're not. It's just going to be in a weird like you're used as the example. It was very nice. It was just very nice. <laughs> I, I was I was I was pleased as punch. Have you talked to so it's you, no. Matt Bronger and Bronger. Nick Kroll. She doesn't shit on Bronger. He doesn't mm-hmm. shit on Bronger. And I then think Nick- he just he takes his aim at 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 uh, Nick Kroll and Hassan Minaj, probably probably simply because their platform is so large. Right. You know, uh, that's probably what it was. Are you friends with them? Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm good, good friends with Nick. I know Hassan just from like him doing hot tub back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And have you, t- have you talked to Nick about it at all? No, I have not. I have not seen him yet. And right. I don't, and I will, I'm not going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> that might, yeah, that makes sense. When you released the special, like, were you aware? I mean, I feel like that's sort of what, uh, what journalists do by the way i was a journalist for many years um that's what journalists do though is they sort of you know they they uh find trends or they make it seem like trends are happening but when you release the special were you aware that there was this quote-unquote trend of comics putting out specials about parenting if you would even call it a trend and if you would call your specials about parenting i i would not have even like my like I think when it got pitched to the New York Times, it was pitched as like pandemic dad or whatever. Mm. Um, and I think that's what got him interested in it. Cause he's like, Oh, I'm working on something about that. Um, Cause that is really the, the main way to get covered in the times is if it's, if you, if, if the writer feels it's a part of a trend is right. Ri- is writing about parenthood, a trend in comedy. Uh, yes. But in a very large Mac, like huge sense that it's been happening since the beginning of stand up comedy. Right. Um, but I thought the, it was an interesting article and it was interesting viewpoint that there's, you know, there's pitfalls to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I was very aware of the pitfalls, I think when writing the material, um, right. but it still is very, you never know if you've accomplished the thing that you're trying to accomplish. And that was what it was very nice. I was trying to accomplish a, a, a special that's about being a dad and about family that w- was specific and unique enough so that it separated it out from other, cause that's been written about a thousand billion times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you feel like? You said that you were trying to avoid the pitfalls. For you, what were the pitfalls? And by the way, the special, I think I already mentioned it, but I just want to say it again. It's called Perfectly Stupid. And if you want to see it, go to perfectlystupid.com. Yes. Um, I was watching it. And you can uh, watch it on your TV. That doesn't mean you can only watch it on, uh, like, that's just, we'll show you all the places yes. you can watch it. Yes. It's available yes. on a variety of places. Exactly. Uh, and I was watching it and my husband was overhearing it. And he was laughing so hard that he then oh. came over and watched it. It's so funny. And it's also heartfelt. It's just, it's just so good. Um, Thank you. It's it's so, so good. Uh, yeah, I just it really, really good. Um, what are the pitfalls you were trying to avoid? I think I was just it, it wasn't I don't think you can really write comedy while trying to avoid something. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, but instead I was just trying to write from a. Uh, from the very the very hyper specifics of my life um and to uh and through those specifics try and get at a larger truth you know uh, like those larger truths are have been talked about millions of times but to get at them through a a a lens that is only that could only be through my brain and life that's what i was trying to do i think Mm -hmm. yeah so uh you mentioned dinosaur jr yes which my very specific reaction was excitement uh, because I also love Dinosaur Jr. Who was your friend who played with them? Eugene Merman. I didn't know he played with Dinosaur. Wait, who did? How did? I what, didn't know that what? either. Eugene yeah. is just like, he's just he's just in with all the rockers, especially sub pop rockers, because he was like, yeah. I think one of the first comedy albums, maybe David Cross was on sub pop. I think maybe Eugene was like the second sub pop comic. And so he gets to, he would always perform at all of the sub pop festivals and stuff. I remember 
going with him. I don't even know if I think he was performing. I wasn't to like the sub pop Jubilee celebration and like sitting down like across the table from Jay Maskus, who's who is Dinosaur Jr. Just being like, oh, my God, like dirting out. So he (laughs) knows all those guys. He's buddies with Jay Maskus. And he he has a bit where he was using a theremin. Mm -hmm. Um. And to, to tell jokes, which is very funny. And so Jay Maskus asked him to come and play theremin on one of the songs. Oh, how cool. So because he was having like guests come and play on different songs. And so because it was like, I, I don't know, I think the 20th or 25th anniversary of the, their first record. Oh, so how cool. yeah, that's how I got to go. It was very exciting. I um so a friend of I was friends with a sub pop publicist when I moved to New York New York I was still writing about music and I was friends with a sub pop publicist and he came to New York it might have been during CMJ Mm -hmm. so this would have been CMJ remember CMJ yes I do (laughs) Tony did you ever go to CMJ yeah we played it I think we only played ever played it once but yeah definitely at least once yeah that was fun um so it would have been like 2002 Two or 2003 or 2004. That would have been exactly when I played it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and so I went out with him and the Shins, and Eugene Merman was there too. And on my Canon Elf, I took a bunch of photos. So somewhere oh, on the Canon, Canon Elf, Elf. I had remember a Canon, that Canon Elf? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> if I could find it, I know. I have, if I have pictures of Eugene Merman and the Shins, and I'm like, I should find <laughs> this somewhere. Um, now, were you – so this is 2000 – between 2002 and 2004. Kurt, were you in New York and, like, were you in the yep. scene at that time? Too? Maybe you're on my Canon Elf, too. Yeah. I, I moved to New York City in 1998. Okay. And then I moved out 2012. 14 good years. 14 solid years. I would say best years of my life, but probably having kids. <laughs> 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 you would say that, but then if Lauren heard, she would probably be upset. <laughs> I would say the best years of my life are right now, I would say. I'd say the best years are all the years. Mm-hmm. Really. There's no bad years. There's hard years, but anyway, I'm getting to I just, <laughs> I just did Pete Holmes podcast. I'm getting too used to like talking about, well, let's talk about the life in general. Let's get right. out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Except that you were you did major in philosophy and English. I did. I did. So you have it in you mm-hmm. to get I to easily like there. that. I find a thing that I do is that when my – so our kids are, are similar ages. And when my kids are like – And apparently gross, similar features as well, they according to They look so Allison. much – I for anyone who hasn't heard me on the Bananas <laughs> podcast. She came which, in hot, folks. She I came, came in – I had a bone to pick with Kurt, which is <laughs> I keep trying to convince him – Go listen to listen to the source material, which is me coming in hot on the podcast. But I will just recapitulate it a little bit here. I came in with a bone to pick because every time I try to convince Kurt that like it's wild how much our kids look alike, he is so blasé about it that it makes me think <laughs> he doesn't want like he's insulted or something and doesn't want them to look alike. And I'm like, no, it's a compliment and it is uncanny, Kurt. Especially when you consider how different he and I look. It's wild. It's like we should be in Twinsburg, Ohio. Our children should. And he's resisting, and I don't like it. It's you're, out you're, of this world. Your yes. blaseness is still is simply that I don't I don't have a full concept of what you're talking about. <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is. Right. That we need is to have upsetting. pictures right next to each other. Well, I've been posting more of my kids, but it's them in costume. Yeah. I will send you side by sides. All right, great. I mean, Scotty Landis saw it, or or is he just like kissing my ass? He's being nice. He's a nice guy. He is a nice guy, isn't he? <laughs> He's a really nice guy. Is he so He's nice? A genuinely he... nice guy. Okay. Is he not? Is he so nice though that you can't tell if he's being insincerely nice? He's very rarely being insincerely <laughs> nice. I would say. Okay. I would say that that is actually true about Scotty Landis. He's very rarely insincerely nice. He'll always try a find a way. If he like dislikes something, he'll find a way to say something that is actually true about it for him. Mm, okay, that's nice. Okay. So now no. why now why did I why did I mention coming on your show though? How did uh, I get on this? I brought it up. You're in the middle of saying something else. You were right. saying oh. Weird. Oh, no, I know what I was going to say. Yes. Right. When my kids are engrossed in something, mm-hmm. then I'll be like, 
great. I can sneak off and go look at my computer or something. Yeah. But whatever I'm looking at is definitely not important. Or I'm exactly. always like, I feel like I'm like stealing time away to like lay on my bed or, mm-hmm. you know, fuck around on my phone. And it like, I really enjoy my time to do nothing. But then I think, and I overhear them having a conversation and it's so cute because their yes. voices are so cute and they're so cute. And I think, why am I not just sitting there yes. staring at them, soaking up the themness because mm-hmm. it's transient? Temporary. Yeah, it's yes. temporary. Yeah. They're only going to be, they're only going to have these little voices that sound like they sucked helium for a little bit. <laughs> a little while longer. Yeah. So why am I so excited to get away from it? I know. Isn't it crazy? It's yes. so crazy. I've been just trying to be very present and it's, it's very hard. It's hard, it's very hard right? Because you just need, because also being, there is a certain level of like, when you realize that, like I should just be going and be aware of them that you're just like staring at them. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, we're here in this moment. Yeah. Do it. You know, it's like this weird, it's like a, a weird expectation um, it's the phone, man. It's just, it's mm-hmm. simply the phone. How I many times right. I want to like tap out and just go look at my phone. Yes. It's just the addictiveness of the goddamn phone, man. I think you're right. Have you tried to quit it? Yeah. I mean, I haven't, I, like, yes, I totally have. I, I've at least tried to like, once they're home from school, put the phone away until they go to bed. Oh, does that and work for you? No. It is. <laughs> Sometimes I can do it and sometimes I can't. And also yeah. sometimes I need to be on it, but most of the time I don't need to be on it. Oh my God. What if it's just as simple as that? And I have, by the way, I've had this realization before that it is yeah. just that. Like back in the day, you know, prior to technology, well, not prior to technology, but like in our parents' day, was it, wh- was it easier for them to be present with us? Because I don't think they were. I don't think there was an expectation at all to be present with your children. Right. That's a new thing. That's a 100% new thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, There wasn't even an expectation to like spend time with your children. Yeah. It was just like, go, go do something. I sometimes think if this is a very grim thought, uh, a grim thought experiment, I think if I found out I had one hour left to live or 10 minutes left to live or something, it would become very simple for me the way I would want to spend it. I would Mm -hmm. want to spend it surrounded by my family. Um, Dana Gould has a funny joke about like the idea that you want your family to, you know, be there to watch you die or something. But (laughs) like, I would just, you know, want my family, this is how, you know, it's selfish of I don't want to put them through that, but that's how I would want to spend it with them huddled around me, um, you know, just like hugging them. And then, so then I imagine that. And then I imagine my kids being like, I want my iPad and being like yeah. me trying to like, no, you don't understand. And then being like, no, I want to go over there and being like trying to like corral them. Like, you know, you don't understand. Like, I and need you, you to die stay here. Mid, mid like, get over here. We're having a... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like trying to convince them to come back. Like, I need my iPad. uh um okay so i don't want to give away the joke but there's like a very funny shell silverstein situation yes in your special um how much can we talk about that without giving that away were you yeah were you angry about the way about what happened Yes, I was. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to, I think we can talk about that part. Okay. Um, I, I, I wanted to, I have a joke about um, the giving, the giving tree. tree. And so I wanted to show a picture of the giving tree uh, as I had millions of times before on stage. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Harper Collins refused to give me the rights to the just holding up the giving tree in the special. And so I, at first the joke was going to be dead. And it was just like, well, we have to cut that joke. And I was like, ah, oh, it's such a good joke. I want to do it. And so I was just trying to think of a way around it. And so I find a way around it that That's- I think also adds another layer to the joke, which I was, which yes. so rarely happens that like a legal requirement allows you to find like a better version of the joke. And uh, I'm really happy with the better version of the joke. It's so, and as you point out in the special, 
they're going to wish they had just given you permission. 100%. Because it 100%. Is they're so going, much worse than so what much they were It's so much worse what I of. did <laughs> than what just showing their book would have been. I would have just given advertisement <laughs> for their book, and instead I do something so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking assholes. Yeah. You fucking assholes, Harper Collins. Give me the be cool with your intellectual property, folks. I, be cool. I and also it would have been covered. It, it, I, I believe it would have been covered under fair use anyway, but it's not a uh, it, you know, it would have been lawyers involved at some point. Well, that's what I was going to say. I didn't realize you need permission to hold up a book. Yeah, cuz they own the copyright of it. So huh. you're using their copyright, essentially. Yeah. Well, that is wild. I really didn't uh, realize that. Hmm. 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 <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So I know that I know the story. At some point, I knew the story. Let me rephrase that. Yeah. But remind me how bananas all came together. Because when I last talked to you, okay, mm -hmm. actually, let me let me go back. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take everyone through a little tour of you on my podcast. So you were on in I believe it was 2013, and you were pitching Asbury Park, uh, and we were talking about it's, it's a real blast from the past, and it was fun to hear because we were talking about television at the time. You and my then producer were recommending I listen to Ray. I mean, not listen. I watch Ray Donovan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> did you stick with that show? I, I think I watched the first season or and second maybe. And I did enjoy it. I yeah, I watched all the seasons and then I started to watch the movie and I tapped out midway through mm. because it, the movie was so different. OK, I was like, I'm out. So many pe characters were gone. I was like, yeah. I can't. My husband never liked it. So it was one of those that like if I wanted to oh, stick with it. Oh, that's tough. Yes. Yeah. I know. There's a, he uh sometimes he and I don't agree. What's another one that he I like and he didn't like? Right now my wife won't watch the peripheral with me. Oh. And I love it. I need to get into that. It's a great. I read the book. I read a galley copy of the book when it because my friend works in publishing mm -hmm. and uh, and they sent it to me. And oh, man, I love that book. Book's great. Who's the I book just by? love William Gibson. William Gibson. Gibson. I love I love everything he's written. William Gibson. He wrote uh, something. Knots. Ots. Something. No. What did he Ots. write? I don't think anything. No. Ots. I mean, um, his first book was. Um, like kind of created cyberpunk. That's what I'm thinking um, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is Neuromancer. That's right. Odds. Yeah. <laughs> and I think <laughs> he created... The same. He, he invented the word cyber. Cyberspace. Cyber. Like he created cyberspace. Like that's this, crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> he's got to be real old by now. Yeah, he's still on Twitter though. He's tweeting it up. I mean, maybe not for much longer. No. But Are you if, on Twitter still? I mean, I have an account. Mm -hmm. I do. I tweet. No, right. I do not. I like like say something to promote something, but it's like it's useless. It gets like two. Yeah, it gets like two likes because I'm never on there. The mm. algorithm doesn't favor me. Right. Um. Yeah, we were talking about that. We were talking about Homeland. We were talking about what else were we talking about? Old shows. Okay. You have very good memory. And I, I I went back and listened oh, you to a listened. little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> Having recordings of the podcast allows your memory to be yes, very good. <laughs> I know. No, my actual memory, sadly, is not so good. Uh, but but uh, see, as evidenced by the fact that I went back and listened, but I really can't. And now I'm like already blanking on what the other shows were because I was like, this is crazy. I love that we're I, I, uh, I'm fucking blanking on the other shows because I was so excited to hear all these sh the blast from the past of all these shows. But now I can't remember. OK. And then you guys came back when you and Lauren were doing Wedlock. Mm -hmm. yes. um, which was a limited series Am Amazon right Amazon po podcast yes audible. it was on Amazon audible. Or audible yeah audible and I loved that podcast that you guys did thank you um, and then you and Scotty started doing bananas which mm -hmm. has just been like that's probably like the most popular because you've done a few different podcasts right that's I like have, the been far and away the most just crazy popular away. podcast you've away. done right easily yes um most. Yeah. 
which I have been uh, a guest on twice. Twice. I, and I didn't realize that it's rare to come back. And I yes. think I campaigned to come back. Thank you for having me back. It's such a fun podcast to go on. Oh, it was a great episode that you came back to. Thank you. I had the most fun. Uh, but yeah, how did that podcast start? Scotty and I had done a pilot for Comedy Central that was about strange news back in the day. And it never went anywhere. But both of us were always like, that show should have been picked up. Like, that was a good, good show. It was essentially like the daily show of strange news with me hosting. And uh, and then I just contacted him, I think, maybe in 2019 and was like, we should do that as a podcast. And he's like, yeah, and we should ask Karen and Georgia to put it on their network. And we're like, yeah. And so then we did. And then we were like kind of, in, you know, it took a full year to like get it going. And then. We were like pre-recording episodes and then they all just happened to come out like two and a half weeks after the pandemic started. And it was like perfect timing because all the, you know, all the news pieces that we do are very silly and and dumb and funny. Um, and then we just tell funny stories with them. So, yeah, I think that it filled a niche in that very dark time where the news was always so scary and awful mm -hmm. um, that we had such fun news was uh, was kind of a balm. I think. Right. And how yeah. did you and Scotty meet? Scotty and I met just through comedy in New York City, like way back in the day. He thinks we met at his, at my backyard barbecue years ago, where we were talking about traveling across country and on a Pullman cart. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, if that's what he thinks, because his memory is like a thousand times stronger than mine. So if he says that's how we met, that's how we met <laughs> in like 2004 or something, 2005. Mm -hmm. And you guys, did you guys just do a tour? We do like little ones here and there. We never like put a tour, t like a long tour together just because I don't want to be away from the family for that long. But yeah, mm -hmm. we just did Minneapolis and and Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I noticed there were a lot of bananas in your special taping because there was yes. a, a lot of Charlie fromages. Yes, people went, people came out. It was pretty great. I, we got like that. We recorded it in, in like a sweet spot in between surges in Denver. Uh, it was like right before the Omicron surge in 2021, and so it was like Mwah. it was a perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How lucky. how was the how was how was your pandemic with uh, not being able to get out there and do stand up? Not doing stand up wasn't a problem other than money. It was more that um, Gus, my son, was five months old at the start of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And he just has, uh, he had just like gastrointestinal issues where he just never slept and pretty much cried the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. And so it, and so like no daycare and two kids, one who was always in a bad mood was real rough. It was real rough. It was dark times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Um, yeah, it was, uh, <sighs> I'm trying to remember. It's like such a big, <laughs> it's such a big mush, you know? Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, there was so much drinking for me. That was just like every night, just like, what are we living for? I'm going to yeah. drink and watch TV. <laughs> right. I mean, I remember making the decision because we had a nanny at the beginning. And then I remember we, and, and we were taking walks every day. Uh -huh. And I remember the family walk. And this was like when we, you know, when you are wearing a mask in the street. To go outside. Still. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember the walk where we decided we shouldn't have a nanny anymore because it's not safe. And being like, oh, this feels, that feels scary to like, right? oh, we have to raise our own kids. What? <laughs> <laughs> how will we, but how will we do it? <laughs> and, but uh, I mean. And work, though, I guess we'll just come up with, you know, we'll trade off every three hours. And like that felt really. um, That like. You know, and, and it, it worked out OK. Um, That trading off. I remember that trading. off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And in some way, you know, like in some ways. You know, Dan Daniel got we Daniel got to see Owen take his first step. 
And my kids have no memory of Daniel going to an office. Um, like in some ways there's good things about it. Um, yeah, it was really hard. And, and then it, at the beginning, it's like, I remember at the beginning, it seemed like all the kids who were home were making these leaps and then they started falling behind. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's been okay. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm not someone, I'm not a stand up, So it's not like I was missing out on stuff in the same right. way that I think a lot of stand ups were, um, I don't know. It's weird. You know, I was just thinking about that this morning or last night that like just how long this phase of our life has been. Yeah. So, you know, at the beginning, it was like I remember someone saying that we're still going to be in our homes in December. And I was like, that's insane. I mean, that was multiple (laughs) Decembers ago, you know? Yeah. It was so crazy. I, I still struggle with how to be living my life now. I feel like I'm like the only one who still struggles with this. Cause I'm I not like- more and more. I'm like, just like, okay, the pandemic's behind us. We're just out, out and about, but I'm like, I don't eat indoors yet. I don't really. Oh, wow. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Well, I mean like I just kind of reverted because I'm a go, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to New York to do the tonight show. And oh, like cool. today I had my, covid test you know so if i got covid before that that would fuck that and then Mm -hmm. lauren's going to hawaii to shoot a tv show and if she got covid right before that that would fuck like all all of our income for like the rest of the year essentially yeah and so we've been like really locked down for the past two weeks like back to what it used to be like not going Mm -hmm. anywhere not doing anything and uh man it sucks (laughs) 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 i was pretty loosey-goosey because we got it I mean, I was loosey goosey because we got it in May. And okay. so then from May to September, I was just like, do, 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 do. I got five months. I got five months to do what I want. And I got very used to that. And so now to be back to it, it just is like, oh, I guess this is forever. This is forever. <clears throat> See, I got it in July. We all got it in July and it sucked. Um, but I didn't take advantage of the immunity because I'm so unclear on like how much immunity we had. But so I just chose to believe. I, it's like I just yeah. chose to believe we had five months. Right. I needed to like I needed the I needed the pressure cooker to be off for like yeah. a couple months. How was it for you guys in May when you had it? Uh, it was just very long. No one got yeah. it. At, like um, because for just the test, the way everybody tested weirdly. Like our son, our youngest, was testing. After he was fine, after everyone had had it for two weeks, he then tested positive for 10 fucking days. And so we had to keep him home. So it was a full month that we lost of work. Like no one could work at all for 30 fucking days. And it was just like, oh, my God, we can't do this again. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's how it was for us. But that's why that's the inconvenience and just the discomfort of it. Um, That's why I'm just like, I I. We can't do this again. That's why we have to be super careful. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But enough of that. Enough of that. Holidays are just around the corner, and perhaps you are looking for an ideal gift for a family member, in-law, grandparents, yourself. Maybe you're looking for an ideal gift for yourself. People don't talk about that enough. They don't talk about the struggle around the holidays to find a gift for yourself. I'm joking, except... Maybe I'm not. Anyway, there's something I want to tell you guys about because I think it makes an an amazing gift and it is a skylight frame. We have one. We have given them to the grandparents for gifts. This is a true story for it was either Christmas or Mother's Day. A couple years ago, my husband, Daniel, came to me. He said, I know what we're going to get the grandmas for I think it was Christmas. I know we're going to get the grandmas for Christmas this year. And I said, what? And he said, skylight frames. They're digital photo frames. They're easy to set up because our his mom and my mom are not like super tech savvy or anything. They're easy to set up. They look, they have black frames, white mats. Um, they look really great, like on the mantle or wherever they set them up. And then you can email photos to them. They can put their own photos, uh, digital photos in them. And then, you know, so they can have like lots of photos of the grandkids. That was the, it, my mom has photos of her own dog in there. And she's put her own photos in there, which I feel like was really, really this frame 
mom, if you're listening, was supposed to just be photos of my children in your frame. That was the agreement, the unspoken agreement. And now she has polluted it with her own photos, which is fine. I did give it to you. But the idea was photos of the grandkids. But anyway, the point is, they love these frames. We have the frame. We love the frame. When my kids go to the house, they love the frame. Uh, and it's just, it's like you, it's, pl- it's plug and play. You just, you can set it up in 60 seconds. It's such a good gift. It is not, I'm going to go as far as saying it is an ideal gift. And it's the time of year where you need to find ideal gifts. Hence, I am your new best friend, like the show title, by turning you on to this ideal gift. Choose from two size options, the original 10 inch or a new large 15 inch frame, 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Now as a special offer, you can get $15 off your purchase of a skylight frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter code Allison. That's right. To get $15 off your purchase of a skylight frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter code Allison. That's skylightframe, S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com promo code Allison. Okay. Just, just to get uh, sad for a moment. So you moved home to help take care of your mom. Yeah. When she was dying. When was that? That was, I moved there in October of 2015. Okay. So that's when, wait, um, that's before kids. Before kids. Yes. We were desperately trying to get Lauren pregnant when my mom was sick. Cause my mom wanted, we just thought it would be some sort of good news in, in amongst the I'm dying vibes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that we're pretty heavy. Um, and that was just like, you know, this panicky, you know, like, I guess we do it now sort of thing. And, right. uh, and yeah, and there's, yeah. And we didn't actually, we finally succeeded right after my mom died. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. Yeah, you mentioned something about that. And the and did Lauren go with you, or did she stay out here? She did. She came out. I was there for like a month by myself, October to November, um, which was kind of a tough, dark time. Mm-hmm. Then she came out right after Thanksgiving, um, and she drove with the dog mm-hmm. and her mom, um, just like a hero, and um. Yeah, and drove out like in the winter time. It was crazy. Like roads got closed for ice and stuff. And then her grandmother got sick while she was driving out to with the dog to be. I mean, it was so crazy. Um, but yeah, so then she was there with me for the rest of the time. She was there from from November until we were up, we were there until July. Like if you had had kids, what would you have done? You probably the whole family would have gone, right? Yeah, yeah. But we would have had to have had a a house you know or maybe i don't know she probably would have wanted that you know she had a husband at that time so it was a very strange time where it was just like i didn't know her husband very well they got married late in life that sort of thing and so it was just like me and him in this house with this sick woman that we loved and just like you know kind of like like operating around each other like bumping into each other you know that sort of thing like like just two animals, like who, 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 who are you? Who, who, you know that that sort of shit. Just grunting around mm-hmm. <laughs> this man. So it was. It, I don't know how. Like my mom probably would have loved to have had children around. Um, and then what a great way to introduce them to death. No. <laughs> <laughs> It is interesting now, my daughter's five, and she understands that her grandma died before she was born. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we, like, do a thing on her birthday where we, like, order her favorite food, and we, like, set a place for her at the table and have her picture out and have a plate for her and put food on it. And we talk about her with the kids. Um, And so that has, you know, put death into the idea uh, you know, at least for my eldest, mm-hmm. which I think is very helpful. Oh, that's really sweet. How have you handled discussions about the afterlife with your kids? There has been no talk about afterlife. She just asked me recently if we believe in God, because someone mm-hmm. at, in kindergarten told her, like, he believes in God and you should too or whatever. And uh, and so she was like, do you believe in God? And I was like, yes. 
And then I was like about to go into like my nuanced under- explanation of it. And she's like, okay. And then like moved on. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be like, yes, but not in a personification of a right. godhead, but more yes. of the spirit like that moves through all things. Energy. Oh, are you? Have you already left? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you just like, and I would like to introduce you to my friend Pete Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> he has some words for you. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, Elliot, uh, because I'm very, I'm, I'm an atheist. Although, mm-hmm. Well, I'm an atheist, however... <clears throat> if pushed, I really have, I also have like a nuance, like, but it's an energy of the, you know, I've got yeah. my whole spiel. Um, but Elliot has like, I think it, Daniel must've talked to him about like, but some people believe in reincarnation, which Elliot really latched onto. I of think course, the course, an opportunity to be a bug or be a bird, <clears throat> right? Yeah. That was right up a kid's alley. <laughs> yeah. Reincarnation, I, think... I bet was invented by a five-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, because I think Daniel felt and I and I don't disagree with this, that like for a child, the idea of like you just die and then it's the big nothing. Like that's just it's a lot to take in. At that no, point, yeah. You yeah. know, so why? You know, so. So Elliot will like talk about like the, you know, the circle and like if I'm born again and I'm a baby again, like, will you still be my mommy? And it's just, like, it's very. Yeah. Right. Sad. The specifics are, of course, where it gets insane, where it, yeah, right? the specifics <laughs> are the crazy part. But also yeah. that's with all like even with an idea of like heaven, I was raised Catholic where it's just like, you know, like, OK, so do they have like ice cream in heaven? And it's just like, fucking who knows, kid? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we definitely don't have lips or tongues. <laughs> so could you be ice cream? Maybe. I don't know. You know, it's like all those questions about mm. that you know, are in general terms work and in specific terms simply do not work. Wait, why would you not have lips or tongues in heaven? Because you're not a corporal being. Huh. I never really <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> Tony, were you raised Catholic? No. Oh. Pretty much, not really any anything. But were you raised to believe in a heaven with lips and tongues? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I never. I, I I'm with you. Where I never. I guess I never really thought about it specifically in that in that way. I mean, are you surprised that there are no lips and tongues in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> I need to see some proof. <laughs> right, you show me no lips and tongues in heaven. You show it to me. Yeah. Because in representations of heaven, there are lips and tongues, I think. Right. But what uh, what would the representation of heaven be if it wasn't? It would just be like a white light, like a just a, a white blank canvas. It's like this is this is each individual reunited with the Godhead mm-hmm. here in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> This is you're giving me a lot to think about. Um, I think it's time to do just Ooh. me or everyone. Yay! Is it just me or everyone? All right, Kurt. Do you have a just me or everyone? Overalls for men. I just got me a pair of sweet overalls, <laughs> and um, overalls have been run by. Children and women and painters for far too long. I'm bringing him back to just heterosexual men wearing overalls <laughs> on a normal basis. I got some special green kind of stylish overalls and I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to wear them on stage. I'm going to do stand up in overalls. <laughs> and I just want to know if it's me, if it's at me or everyone that men should be allowed to wear overalls, even if you're not a painter. Um, I am, what's well, interesting, because when you said it, I was like, is he about to say, hell no? Or is he, I'm but into I, it. yeah. Um, I mean, this almost feels like it could be yes, please, or oh, please, which is my segment. It's my like tired or wired, you know, <laughs> I invent, I invented that format. They stole it from, it's my hot or not. They stole it from me. Um, Interesting. It can't be just you. You know who also who's a straight <clears throat> man who I've seen wear overalls is Dak Shepard. 
Really? So he would, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know how you feel about <clears throat> I don't him. know enough about Dax Shepard to have an opinion. Maybe you guys could have an overall party. Okay, that sounds good to me. I'm <laughs> yeah. interested in that. Also, um, I just realized that in addition to painters, we also have uh, choo-choo engineers uh, yes. are also wearing a lot of overalls. So right. I'm going to take it away from painters and choo-choo engineers. But like, what, what about painting makes you need <laughs> overalls? Know. Is it the up and down? Know. Like, because if you're doing that, you're show, you know, you're encouraging your pants to f- again YouTube.com to watch me pantomime painting. You're like encouraging your pants to fall down. <laughs> that you need that extra support from your shoulders. Yeah. That is well, one I thing like that it. I have found about wearing them is if you wear them too tight, your your shoulders start to like ache, and if you wear yeah. them too loose, they start to fall off your. Sh- so it's like it's a real mm. delicate. I'm right, adjusting. you got to find your balance. I'm adjusting. Do you ever like flop off one shoulder, sort of like '90s <laughs> style? Like no, TLC, I've only probably? worn them once, so what, maybe I'll try that in the future. What shirt do you wear underneath? I wore a black shirt. They're green. They're like military green. They sound so it super looks, cool. It looks almost. It looks like I would. It looks kind of like I build custom cabinetry for the military. That when I wear them, <laughs> <laughs> they sound super cool. Kurt. They're very cool. Um, now, when you need to pee, what do you do? Pop them off, but hold zipper. them? It's got a zipper. Oh, my God. They've yeah. thought of everything. They have. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, overalls? Uh, I, you know, I, I've never really had a, a desire. A desire. Uh, but, uh, well, I, I wanted to ask, like, is there something, is it literally just you like how they look? Or is, was, is there something specific about them that appeals to you? I like the way they look. I like the the extra pockets. It's cool to have a, have multiple pockets on your chest in addition to your <laughs> butt and your and your pant and your like sides. Because yeah. especially like when you sit down, I don't like sitting down on my wallet, pop mm. that out, slide yeah. it in your chest pocket. There you go. Easy peasy. Mm. It's nice. Yeah. So I like you like got that. one. I always do that with jackets. Yeah. You got the one big one across the the front pocket. This one is like two small, two one small one that's perfect for my uh, for my uh, wallet, and then another one that's zipped that I can Ooh. put. I don't know if I was traveling, I'd put my passport in there. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I get. I say wear what you want to wear. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I've, as I've gotten older, I've gotten much better at uh, accepting that. Just like. As long as you're not hurting somebody, do what you want to do. Yeah, right. right. If I saw Tony on yeah. the street, he'd go, choo, choo, get out of here. <laughs> Wait, choo, Tony- choo, go paint a house. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, when were you judgmental about people's clothing and like what kind of clothing would inspire your ire? Unintentional uh, well, rhyme. I, I, I didn't necessarily even mean clothes. I just kind of mean like in general. Oh, because you used like to be like a raging general. homophobe. <laughs> 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 Let me t- mark the time code, see where I got to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm down. Who makes these uh, these overalls? I think it's a company called Livson. L-V-S-V-N. How does your wife feel about them? Hates uh-huh. them <laughs> Okay. With a passion. She has <laughs> never hated. I said, I'm going to talk about overalls on this. And she's like, you tell them I fucking hate. Those overalls. <laughs> and you and, weren't going to till I, well, asked. I, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going. To. She hates them so much that I, I have to wear them enough. So she knows I'm not wearing them to spite her. <laughs> I have to wear them so much so that she knows I genuinely enjoy them. And I am not simply spiting her. That. Doesn't seem like it's proving your point. <laughs> that actually just seems like you're really spiting her. <laughs> Wait, why did she hate them so much? I have no idea. My okay. wife and I have the most radically different taste in clothes, <laughs> in clothes. and music and style. It, it, like it, you couldn't find two people more radically different. Who? This is exciting. <laughs> Tell me about each of your tastes. I would always prefer like a weirder style, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think she has a more conventional style. For your clothes or her clothes but or also, just also oftentimes everything. she's right. Like because my choice, my tastes go to the uh, absurd and the strange that I can often make bad choices. 
So she is often more right than I am, but my desire is always my desire is always for a brightly colored everything, a mm-hmm. bright colored suit, you know. Mm-hmm. And she's always kind of pulling me back into the realm of like reality of like <laughs> where will this where will you wear the purple suit, you know? <laughs> uh that sort of thing. Um do you disagree? So you disagree about your own clothing. Do you also disagree about how like the house is decorated? Uh, we did. We did. I think. I think we've come to terms with it. I also think I just. I think I have given. I've given over to because also like her style isn't. Um, it doesn't offend me in any way, you know. Uh, so I think she would maybe be offended by my choices. Um, And when she is, I'm like, she has a point. (laughs) (laughs) Oftentimes, um, I don't necessarily have like an eye for style and I don't have an eye for fashion as much. Uh, And so I do default to believing her most of the time. Mm -hmm. And when I say radically different, we're not that radically different. We agree on a lot. And there is, I always say that our music tastes are very different. Um, but they're not that different. We we agree on a bunch of bands. It's just very often if I put music on that I like a lot, after about seven minutes, she's like, can we please turn this off? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what's what's it, what are bands that she likes? What are bands that <clears throat> you like that she doesn't like? Uh, like all my... Like anything, I think she's for the most part doesn't want music on in the house that, and I'm speaking for her, and she's going to listen to this and be like, "Don't talk, to, don't, don't put words in my mouth." But I think like I'm often listening to music that I relax to is very loud and aggressive, and she would prefer music in the house that is more relaxing and doesn't increase anxiety. <laughs> uh, but because, <laughs> but because I'm so familiar with it, it decreases my anxiety, and I love it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that like uh, jingly, jangly indie rock, uh, aggressive jangly indie rock is not her vibe. But some she does like some jangly indie rock, so it's kind of tough. Do you listen to new jangly indie rock, or are you still listening to old jangly indie rock? Because I am, st- I don't discover new music very much anymore. Yeah, it's just called being old. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. I try to. And I have friends who are still very much tapped in and send me recommendations that I listen to. Um, but if I'm honest with myself, my go-tos are going to be things that I listen to in my 20s and early 30s for the most part. I just love them. And one mm-hmm. jangly indie rock that we do agree on is Wolf Parade. We both like Wolf Parade. I realized that when people would say like, oh, what have you been listening to lately? And I, the the new band that I had been listening to was Band of Horses. And I was like, that came, there, at, some, <laughs> at a certain point, I was like, realized that came out 10 years ago. And at this point, that came out like, tw- I don't know, way more than 10 years ago. Yeah, way more. So, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's something new I listened to sort of recently. But anyway, um... I recently got into Beach Bunny recently and Snail Mail recently, both or who are going to be on or Beach Bunny was just on bananas and Snail (laughs) Mail is going to be on bananas soon. So that's another thing, too, where it's like I find a band and I'm just like, oh, have them on bananas. (laughs) I like to have musicians on. That's cool. Yeah. Tony, you know, you know, Tony is a rock star, right? Did you know you're a rock star? Uh, That's a that's a strong statement He's what band guy. were you playing cmj with in 2002 uh it's called motion city soundtrack nice and uh you know what kurt you have you have seen me play drums more than allison has really <laughs> yeah. i also uh i sometimes play with jonah ray and oh, you, I, you yes, were at yes, the show yes. at the lodge room yes if I, I was correctly. that was yeah. super fun yeah yeah that was so great you guys are so tight for being a a, for being for, a band that is not really a band, <laughs> not, like a joke band, you guys yeah. are like a fucking rock and roll machine. <laughs> well, thank you. It's a good time. <laughs> Tony's being modest. Motion City Soundtrack are like a huge band, and he has a gold record that I like to give him crap for. Whoa, a gold yeah. record! Holy shit! Mm-hmm. What's a gold record? How many is that? Uh, five hundred thousand. Holy shit! Yeah, it's they crazy. just toured to like you play. Did you guys play arenas? No, we play like 
I don't know, clubs, but you know, like uh, anywhere from like ones. thousand to two thousand people clubs. That's usually. awesome. Yeah. Did you? Why don't you have it right behind you? He did for the longest time. Oh. Well, that yeah, when I was recording the other room, I do. Okay, but uh, yeah, it's he a, did for the longest different. time. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, not not a thing I ever thought I would have. And so. also the fact that it simply does not exist anymore. Like a gold record, like a uh, the version of a gold record now yeah. is probably selling 10,000 <laughs> records. Well, it's it's still the yeah, I know. It's, but like it's the, a weird the, thing cuz streaming works into it yeah. now and oh, it's it like does? a certain amount of str- yeah, uh, cuz a certain amount of streams equal like one, one album one purchase or, so, yeah. or something, right? Yeah. It's, it's one million streams. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kurt, do you have a hey go fuck yourself? I would say, I so I had a hey go fuck yourself that was going to be about my children hiccuping, but oh. I don't want to use the term hey go fuck yourself to my children. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and so maybe I'll just say to people in general who drive Mercedes. Oh. Uh, that I find that they're often so it it used to be it used to be Mercedes and mm. Mercedes are slowly being taken over sadly by people who drive Teslas mm-hmm. and I don't want that to be the case but I'm talking about when you notice people doing the dumbest moves in the most aggressive manner on the road mm-hmm. that it's either a Mercedes or a Tesla 90% of the time is uh, I would like to say hey Hey, 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 go fuck yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, are we I just going like... to are we going to hate Tesla people now cuz cuz of Elon? <sighs> I think we might have to. It sucks because it's such a great car. <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely wanted one for so long. I can't afford one. Uh but then but now if I could afford one, I don't think I would. I would go with something else. Uh, just yeah. because of Elon. Yeah. Yeah. Tell and also, bet- oh, yeah, it just no, seem like they're the worst drivers, too. Some of yeah. the worst drivers. <laughs> Tony, were you going to say f- something? Yeah, I was just going to say, do you feel like, I, I, I don't know if it's a post-pandemic thing. I feel like it is. I feel like everyone's driving has just gotten way worse lately. Yes. Hands down. Like, I feel like every time I leave the house, I get in, like, nearly three accidents, no matter where I'm going. Yes, and also I feel like if you try to change lanes, 600 people honk at you and it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for existing. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it, I'm, I'm blown away constantly. And uh, it's, yeah, and like I'm amazed at how long it takes people to just turn or park their car. It's just like it's out of control. Yeah. And is it a, that people are worse or is it that we have less patience for was it always bad and we all, and we now have less patience because we're not used to it? Right. Yeah. Probably a little bit of both. No, I think people are, I think it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that brief pandemic window when everyone was like, it's so beautiful out without all the smog and there's no Isn't traffic. Amazing. And the birds yeah. like immediately returned. It was so yeah. crazy. Yeah, there were like three nice days. <laughs> there was like, yeah, it was like two and a half weeks where they like shut down like one factory and you're like, oh, it's one factory that, <laughs> that <laughs> makes all the smog. Yeah, And you're like, that one turned off. And it's like all of a sudden we've like the earth rejoiced. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves um, are galloping across the five. <laughs> two adorable your kid things, Kurt. Does your daughter still refer to like a when your throat makes a sound as a gra- was it grangle? A grangle. Does we she will, still call it that? She now it's like this weird thing where she claims she's <laughs> she said the other day she's like, "Well, you know, I am self-taught." So <laughs> Um, that's most of the things I know are self-taught. And she's like, and Grangle is a pretty great ex- example of that. <laughs> she looks at us like a, like an egotistical bragging of like how, of how much we have not affected her <laughs> as parents. <laughs> so it is like this weird thing that she does believe, honestly believes that we have taught her no thing <laughs> and that she has simply manifested knowledge uh, on her own. <laughs> I love that grangle. It's such a good word. And then also there was this video that you posted. I can't remember if it was her or 
Gus, I think it was her, where you asked if she had been painting and she said no, but she was covered in paint, right? <laughs> yeah, we had come home, I think, from actually seeing Santa. So she must have been like two and uh, and she had paint all over her face and like on her <laughs> eye, like eye, eye lid. And, she, and I was like, have you been painting? She's like, no. And I was like, <laughs> were, you were just asking me if you could paint. Yeah, but, but you did not open the paints and paint. No. And she looked at me like, why would you even think I did that? <laughs> it's a pretty great video. Yes. I have now scru- I have scrubbed my account, I think, pretty thoroughly of kid stuff um, and just put it on a private thing because mm-hmm. of I just started doing reels, you know, like mm-hmm. a couple months ago and got a whole bunch of new followers from reels. And just some of the comments were so fucking dark. I was like, I do not want these monsters to have access to my children's images. And so I kind of scrubbed it. So unfortunately, I think maybe that video is there if you scroll endlessly down. Um, But for the most part, I put them on a private thing. Oh, what kind? I don't know if I should ask you what kind of comments on the show or after. Because I I still uh, post my stuff, but I always I wonder if I should like. Shutter I always that. wondered, and 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 it, and it was just simple. And I always thought, like, there's no reason it doesn't matter. It's not like, yeah, it doesn't. I, I always thought it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then I just saw the comments were just so, just so mean, you know, just like oh. obviously strange strangers who have no connection to me whatsoever, and like coming at me in a gross way that I was like, oh, I don't want these people. Like, I immediately mm-hmm. just it was an it was an unconscious like get my kids off my account. Right. Feeling. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well. And if you don't feel that way, I think it's not a problem. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I do have people judging me, like getting upset with my kids having pacifiers and things, but I just Ugh. feel like, oh, fuck them. Ugh. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, but they haven't said anything. Whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, yeah. I don't want to manifest it in the same way that your daughter has manifested knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, it was so nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank for you having me so on. What a treat. much. Tell everyone again where they can go to find the special. Plug anything. Oh, wait. We didn't talk real fast. You're in the movie Barbarian. Yes, I am. I Who? just watched that last week. Oh, did you nice. see Kurt? Nice. Yeah. I did. It's a very short scene. It's a very short yeah. scene. Blink and you'll miss me. Yeah, but I noticed it immediately. <laughs> now, this is a scary movie. Yes. How scary, scary are we talking? Very scary. Okay. I will yeah. never see if you, it. You don't like, don't, don't watch this one, Allison. <laughs> I will be <laughs> sitting this scary. one out. All right. Uh, so, t- yes, tell everyone where they can find you and your podcast and all of that stuff. Go to perfectlystupid.com. You can watch my special or you can find The Bananas Podcast anywhere you get uh, podcasts. It's hosted by me and Scotty Landis on the Exactly Right Network. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, and if you like what you're hearing, or even if you don't, make sure you're subscribed. Leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. Click five stars. Tell your friends. Follow me on social media at Allison Rosen on Twitter and Instagram. Check this out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Allison Rosen. Subscribe. I'm on Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Allison Rosen. Uh, bonus episodes of The Friend Zone can be found there, as well as all sorts of other bonus stuff. There's love where you can text me and I'll text you back. Uh, check that out if you subscribe for, if you do an annual subscription. So subscribe for a year, you get two months for free. It is quite a deal. Patreon.com slash Allison Rosen. I'm also on Cameo. Uh, and um, what am I missing? Oh, check out my other podcasts, Childish and Upworthy Weekly my lighthearted news podcast that comes out on Saturdays. Tony, what about you? Uh, Twitter and Instagram at Tony Thaxton. (laughs) And and, uh, my show was our albums every Tuesday. And uh, I'm going to be playing with Jonah Ray uh, again, as we just talked about a little bit ago. Uh, A couple shows in L.A. right before Thanksgiving. uh, One in San Pedro and one here in L.A. at the Lodge Room. I forget the exact dates, but hey, you got a few weeks to prepare. So go right see before them. Thanksgiving. That band fucks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Listeners, thank you for listening. I love you. You matter. Goodbye. Hey, do you know about the Allison Rosen show? We had a good time, but now we gotta go.
Rosie.